What's going on you guys? My name is Mike Hilario. Some of you may know me as Slim. Those of you that don't, I too have a YouTube channel. Hopefully uh, whoever's channel you're watching this on, they linked it down below. Uh, this past weekend at the San Jose California Regionals, there was about 400 people, nine rounds. I ended up going 7-2, uh, uh, not with the typical deck. I did not play Thunder Dragons. I did not play Sky Strikers. I didn't play Orcus. I didn't play Salomon Great. I didn't play any of the decks that are the quote unquote meta decks of the format. What I did play was Danger World FTK. That's right, you guys, Danger World FTK. And for those of you that don't know what that is, and if this video sounds interesting, well, let's get into it. All right, you guys, like I said, this past weekend, I played the Danger World FTK. And for those of you that don't know, uh, this is the card that does it. This is the main boss monster of the deck. Arcana Force XXX won the world. His effect reads, when he summons, so in any possible way, uh, special summon, normal summon, tribute summon, summoned off Saryuja, summoned off Monster Reborn, a world legacy succession. Uh, you toss a coin, and if the result is heads during the end phase, send two monsters that I control to the graveyard. I skip my opponent's turn. Tails, uh, during the stand, uh, during the uh, opponent's draw phase, they add the top card of their graveyard to their hand. Basically, what this does is I just skip their turn, and that's what I was doing basically all weekend whenever I went first, if I was able to get through my whole deck. And yeah, I play a ton of dangers. I play three Saryuja. Uh, it's basically like Danger FTK slash Draw FTK, except that it's World, OT uh, World FTK OTK. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a little backstory of why I chose this deck over uh, any other decks, because people who know me know I usually play Thunder Dragons or something meta, but uh, uh, there's a kind of like a cool story behind this deck so we'll get into the profile but we'll start with the main reasons why i played the deck so of course the boss man the win condition of the deck the world and light barrier so people don't know light barrier the short version of this is that it lets it so that whenever I summon an Arcana monster, I automatically choose the coin flip. So I'm always calling heads because that means I'm going to skip my opponent's turn. This does have an effect though. The, say I summon the world and say I'm not able to put damage on board. Uh, during the standby phase, I do flip a coin. And um, based on that result, it basically causes another loop if I hit heads again. Um, you know, I actually do have to flip a coin at that point. Basically, I'm looping them again. I've skipped two of my opponent's turns, and I'm for sure going to win that turn because usually when I'm summoning the world, I mean, it starts at 3,100 under Saryuja. It's 3,400. All I got to do is get a couple more monsters on the board, and it's game. So that's pretty much the win condition. Uh, the backstory on this was uh, a good friend of mine whose name is also Michael lent me these cards. He had a first edition near mint uh, ulti world, as you guys can see, and it was originally going to be for a deck profile. Shout out to my brother, Akeem Davis. Uh, he almost topped YCSU. Chicago with this strategy and I wanted to basically just do a deck profile and just kind of do my thoughts on it but when uh, my friend Michael gave me these cards for that usually he just says you know have fun with it do whatever he uh, said Mike this is actually one of my favorite cards one of my favorite archetypes is there any way these cards can be played I've never been able to make it work successfully you know as hard as I've tried and I said yeah dude there actually is it actually just topped the YCS he's like I know you go to a lot of events he's like will you play this for me and I was like you know what yeah I will and I knew that there was a regionals coming up up um at the time he gave me the cards i think it was in january and uh, there was a regionals in february i was gone however so i wasn't able to attend but this regionals that just took place i told myself you know what i kept a promise to my friend i'm gonna play this and it turned out pretty well i ended up uh, going x2 going 7-2 after nine rounds i got 23rd place i already had my invite but it was just you know to play the deck uh, for my friend michael and i mean it worked out so pretty happy with it but yeah, that's the win condition of the deck is Arcana Force, uh, XX1, the world, and Light Barrier. Sometimes you're just hard summoning the world and flipping a coin. It's like going to Vegas and gambling, and hopefully you just win. But uh, on to the rest of the deck. Uh, it's why the deck is so insane. It's dangers a lot of dangers tons of dangers uh, we're gonna start with of course the nine best ones nessie jackalope snake you guys have seen these cards before uh, basically this deck just puts a bunch of monsters on the board makes a saryuja and you know just draws through the whole deck we have a ton of draw cards uh, there's a card that's actually in my deck that no one was playing yet in this deck and uh, i have more shout outs as the video progresses but i talked to several people about this deck and we i ended up deciding on this list and i'm really really happy with it but uh yes yeah, so the nine best dangers and then um the two fours the chubacabra and the mothman so these are actually extremely important because this is one of the only decks that can still hard play as a thought because you make a nyarla and then you just put as a thought on top and when you put as a thought on top it means no hand traps it means my curious my saryuja is my beginning of the end my allures all my draw cards are going to resolve and you're not going to be able to respond to them and that's enough to win the game like honestly it's enough to win the game and also like just extra bodies on the board is just really really solid 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I played, so I played the fours and then I played the eights. I played two Bigfoot, two Thunderbird, and two Ogopogo. Uh, so it's actually a total of 21 dangers. I did not play Dogman. That card is trash. I'm sorry. I wanted to play that card. Originally, I had like one copy in here and then I realized, no, this card, this card sucks. Like it literally does nothing for me going first. Originally, I remember Akeem was playing uh, three of it and he was playing Draco Sack. And originally I was trying that, but I just, I didn't like it. It didn't feel consistent enough to me to put, you know, to put two piece of crap monsters on the board, make a Draco sack, make some tokens, and then try to link into Saryuja. I figured I want these level 8s because they all do something. This pops a face up, this pops a face down, this uh, is like a foolish burial, so this fuels beginning of the end, this with Twin Twister is broken, this with Twin Twister is broken, and also with the spell card, that one of the draw cards that's in my deck, uh, yeah, it just made these cards insane. So These are all the dangers I played. It was uh, 21 danger monsters, 21 upstart goblins because uh, Konami didn't want to hit any of them. So. There's that, and then the support cards, three brow, uh, this card is nuts, I love Dark Worlds to death, I still have my ulti brows that a friend of mine gave me in college, shout out to you Nanigans, I know you don't play the game anymore, uh, I don't really hear from you much anymore, but I miss you bro, and I always will keep these for you, so... I uh, had to play my ulti brows. Never, get, never getting rid of these. These were my bays. And then uh, I saw this card like it was my job. The one sky blaster. And the reason why I saw this card so much is because I draw through my whole deck. Like I'm drawing through my whole deck so much. And you know my opponents will waste hand traps. And then I'll as a thought them. And then yeah, summon sky blaster. Summon tokens. They're just like it's a one of I'm like yeah I drew like about 20 something cards out of my deck I'm probably gonna see it so yeah this card at one is still absolutely insane in this deck and then one of the other MVPs was uh, Blackwing Zephyros the Elite shout out to my boy Charles he hooked me up on the Ultra literally at the last minute I was going around the regionals like a madman asking for a Ultra Zephyros and everyone looked at me like I was insane I probably asked like 80 people I'm not exaggerating I went through the around the whole hall and uh, my boy Charles who's been playing the game just as long as I have actually had one of these so shout out to you brother thank you for hooking me up on this uh, this card was very, very good. This card's extremely important for the deck because it lets you reuse dangers. It lets you reuse the world. Like, say you summon it early and say you get tails. That kind of sucks. So what you do is you bounce the world back to your hand and then you do this again, make another Saryuja special again, and you, you try again. You try again to get heads. And this card lets you do that. It's also a four for the Nyarla Azathoth play. So that's really solid. And then just the one should all be... Uh, it's like another brow lets you draw a card if it's discarded off dangers. All these cards are amazing to be discarded off dangers. So... As for the monster count, it should be uh, 28 monsters and then uh, 12 spells. You guys already saw a light barrier, but uh, <laughs> the most broken card in my deck. Um, <laughs> yeah, this card says draw three, beginning of the end. A shout out to my boy Monty, aka Black Bay, for uh, uh, hooking me up on these. Cause, man, no one had these. Ulti first ed, beginning of the ends are really hard to come by, but uh, I knew my boy uh, could come through for me, and he did. And Man, this card literally just says draw three. You have seven or more darks, banish five, draw three. Not once per turn, I mean, it's broken. Like, it's literally broken. And it's so easy to get seven darks in your deck when your entire deck, when 27 out of the 28 monsters is dark and you're just, you know, drawing, discarding, doing so much. And, yeah, th this card is nuts. Like, this is the reason to play Dangers is uh, beginning of the end. And, yeah. And then uh, three allure, I mean, same thing. My whole deck is dark, so just draw through the whole deck. And then the spice, the card that there's only one person who played this card with dangers, and it's because they're playing blue eyes. So shout out to you, uh, Alan, aka uh, Seto Kaiba, the blue eyes master. And it was two trade in. So I have not seen any danger list that play trade in, and it kind of blew my mind because, I mean. They, it's the card says discard and you know you discard a Bigfoot you discard a Thunderbird you discard an Ogopogo something happens and I mean it's nice like you just you know you discard you pop a card draw two cards like it's crazy what I really liked about this card too is that you know it just helped me like just filter through my deck like so fast my deck is like danger turbo with the win condition of the world and if that doesn't work well then I just put a bunch of monsters on the board make some link monsters and yeah your life points hit zero so it was pretty crazy but yeah trading was insane I shout out to my boy Ken quo he was the one who talked to me about this card and says why aren't you playing this card and i was like it says discard doesn't it? he's like it does i'm like oh my god you're right like you know i just felt so dumb for not realizing it but uh yeah trade-in was definitely one of the best cards in my deck i only played two though because uh the world is also an eight for people who don't know uh arcane of the world is an eight so if you trade it in early you can reborn it with a uh, monster reborn and uh world legacy succession in order to uh you know get the effect off again if you have light barrier barrier it's game because you just call heads and you know they skip their turn so 
that was it for like the like the draw engine and then uh the two reborn cards that i mentioned uh world legacy succession and monster reborn these are extremely important because um not only are they to reborn the world if anything happens it lets you um reborn monsters to make another saryuja or it just helps you reborn monsters for game i'll be honest i won a lot of games I, I up until round five i hadn't dropped a game and a lot of my game twos after i uh basically ftk'd with the world was they would make me go second so going second i would just summon a bunch of dangers make a wee witch's apprentice my monster all my darks gain 500 and then i just attack for a billion a billion and it'd be game so these cards are really important in bringing back monsters so it was really really handy to play these uh, not only for the combo but for uh, just uh, monster recursion in general and the last card is card destruction this card is broken like i don't know why this card even came off the list this card didn't get asked once everyone let it resolve and there was one game against salad i discarded it with like three dangers and i mean it was <laughs> i mean it was game like it was utterly ridiculous uh yeah i mean i played dark world back in the day you guys know what dark worlds if you card destruction it was game well dangers are kind of like dark worlds in a sense so yeah that's what ended up happening that's it uh for the deck you guys it was a clean 40 i had a car uh, a card count of 45 and i cut it down there was like I, I like maxed out on all the level eight dangers but then i realized like my hands were just getting too clumpy with them so i want to just have a more consistent deck so yes yeah, so i shrunk it to 40 and i uh, definitely was very happy with the results so that's it for the main deck uh for the extra deck real quick three of this broken card that you know I i'm surprised this card survived the ban list i don't think it'll survive the next ban list but you're letting me play three i'm gonna play three it lets it says draw four like this with beginning of the end is ridiculous because it really does become a draw four because you can draw beginning of the end put back the other three cards beginning of the end draw three more cards and you just you can make up to four of these in one game because you're able to shuffle it back with unicorn for a fourth time so this is ridiculous i never did that but there were a lot of games that i actually did summon three star usually so it was broken uh, MVP of the deck and then definitely uh, curious was another MVP basically you use this all your dangers are different types you just usually send the world depending on the situation I was usually sending Shadal Beast or Zephyros though because I would kind of want to just summon the world out of my hand off of um, Saryuja but sending Beast was awesome because it let me draw a card sending Zephyros was awesome because it let me um, you know reuse a danger and then this milling three cards uh, statistically speaking it would usually mill a couple more darks which fueled beginning of the end so it was insane and if this card was ever cleared off the board it let me get a card back but I was usually linking away with it but uh, there was also that option too and then because my deck can play it, I played Nyarla and Azathoth. Uh, whenever I got this off, people just, I mean, there was nothing you could do if you didn't have Impermanence. Once this card sticks to the board, that's it. You can't use hand traps or anything. I mean, Impermanence is the only out. And even then, like, if you're, if I get your hand count down and I'm just drawing through my whole deck and I get to the world and you have nothing left, like, I mean, it's insane. So, uh, Azathoth was definitely an MVP when I summoned it. People were shocked that, I, that a deck was still playing Azathoth. I'm like, yeah, I mean, my deck can play it. Why wouldn't I play it? Uh, then on the Link Monsters, uh, Link Spider, that's for the um, Sky Blaster tokens. One Space Insulator, this card is really, really good in this deck because you can just make it with the Sky Blaster tokens, and that's really handy because not only is it a dark for beginning of the end, but it also just helps you set up uh, curious plays. It helps you link. It just helps you um, link climb, and I really, really like that. Uh, and then without a doubt, I, I underestimated this card, and I was so wrong. This was. I, I, I'll be honest, after Saryuja, I think this was the best card in my deck. Whenever I went second, I was never summoning Saryuja. I was always summoning this. I was summoning this and just putting a bunch of monsters on the field that are all dark because my whole deck is dark and just attacking my opponent for game. It didn't matter. I just I just ripped fields apart with like nightmares and then linked away into dark monsters and then this gave them a 500 boost. I played against a trick star guy, really cool guy, uh, round four. And I mean, game one, like literally he... Um, he had put stuff up, and then I uh, I literally summoned Wee Witch. I didn't even get the, the world off during either of those games. And I literally just did the same thing of summoning Wee Witch. A bunch of monsters just attacking for game. All his trick stars lost 400 because they were light, and it was game. It was insane. So, man, uh, if you're playing a danger deck, this is like the best card. Like, it's insane. It's really insane. I never thought I could find a deck that could really utilize this. But, man, uh, this card is insane. Uh, and then the Nightmares. I played uh, Cerebus, Phoenix, uh, Unicorn, and Griffin. I played all of them because... Uh, they're just good. They're the utility. They let me draw cards, and um, they're just all really good. Being able to pop, pop, uh, being able to spin stuff, really good. Also, this being dark is super important with We Witches Apprentice. Um, you know, it goes to 27. That's pretty big. And then Griffin, uh, I don't actually think I, I want to say I maybe summoned it once. the The plan with it was. 
if I milled light barrier and you know I needed to resolve uh, the world and I needed heads to resolve, as convoluted as it sounds, the play was to summon Griffin, uh, set the set the light barrier from my graveyard on, uh, into the the field zone, and then shuffle it back with Unicorn, and then hope to draw it and activate it again. It sounds complicated. It's actually not that complicated, but it um it was just there as another option. And uh, Griffin's effect is actually pretty good. And then uh, the Borals to round out the extra deck. Uh, I didn't summon this card until the very last game during the very last round of Swiss. And it won me the game flat out because I thought I lost. I uh, I was going against Orcus. I lanceed him in game three as he was about to combo off. He ended on just a uh, Galatea. And I went Prankatops. And I, you know, I did some danger things. I ended on a Prankatops, a Wee Witch and two Chupacabras, and I had cleared his board, so I thought, okay, this is game, and when I summoned the Wii Witch, the Wii Witch was the last card I summoned, I thought, okay, as soon as I summon this and attack, it's game. He drops Phantasma, and I'm like, oh my god, it's dark. Did I just, you know, did I just mess up? Did I just screw myself during this last game? Because I committed my whole hand, and this was everything I had, and I was about to scoop, and then I did some simple math, because at least I know that kind of math, and I linked away my Wii Witch and my two chubacabras into uh boral sword and attacked with boral sword and uh uh prankatops for game so this card came in clutch at the last minute so really happy i played it and then just to my side deck real quick uh shout out to you johnny you're never getting that back actual sky blaster tokens again shout out to you joe bogley thank you so much for letting me get these bro i love these i love having the real ones my side deck real quick this is the best card this card is broken. This is a god card against Orcus. They can't play. This was broken. I played against two, um, what is it? Two True King Dinos. Uh, not True King. I played against a True King Dino, a Lost World Dino, all those kind of Dino decks. And this card was just game. Uh, you know, you just drop it when you know they got pill and they can't do anything. Uh, two Denkos. This was for all the back row decks of going second. Just summon this. You know, summon a bunch of dangers. It's game. Uh, same thing with Prankatops. Uh, the reason why I didn't max out on these cards, as you guys can see, I'm drawing my whole deck. So I didn't want to see, like, a ton of them since I can only really do one per turn. So uh, these were good. This was the only card I wanted to have multiples of because I would side it in going first or second against Orcus because it's just that good. Same thing for Danger Thunder. And then I played only one Sphere Mode. Um, you know, shout out to my boy Derek. He told me to... I had two Sphere Modes originally, and then uh, we turned one of the Sphere Modes into a uh, Artifact lancia because uh this card is just so high impact against orcus it's literally skip their turn it's like a d barrier basically and then with my deck being able to otk going second with all the dangers this was definitely a good call so great call on that derek i really appreciate that and sphere mode was just there uh for all the you know the build -a board decks and i didn't really play too many of those but this was basically for uh you know for things like that and yeah, it was fine. I, I saw it a couple times, and just they didn't have three monsters, so I just you know it got hit, uh, it got sniped when I was revealing dangers, and that was fine. Uh, three twin, definitely one of the best cards in my side deck because it triggers all my dangers. This plus Thunderbird, this plus Bigfoot is ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. And then I sided two anti spell and an Imperial Order. This was for Sky Striker, and this was also for Pendulum. So basically, the Griffin would come in more handy in those matchups because I could, against Pendulums, I could literally, you know, mill this off of Curious or just have this in the graveyard and then reset it with uh, Griffin if it got milled at all, or I could just draw into it. Same thing goes for Imperial Order. The, the Curious Griffin lock is really, really solid. So that's what these were for. Uh, it didn't come up, but uh, it just was there. And then I a side deck Dweller because um, against Salomon Great, I actually only played one. Uh, the plan was just to bring this out and just, you know, so they can't play on their turn and then my deck naturally just attacks for games so that was the plan with this but uh it didn't happen but uh yeah that was the deck you guys hope you guys enjoyed it uh whoever's channel you're watching this on please you know give them a thumbs up if you liked it. if you have any questions feel free to you know message me or ask me about it in the comments uh hopefully they link my channel again the channel name is simply slim ygo some of you might remember me as slim x team symmetry i don't know but yeah uh, it felt great to play this deck for my friend michael i kept a promise to a friend and you know that's how i am i always try to keep my promise promises to people as crazy as this was and i'll be honest i did better with this deck than i did with the uh, meta decks i know it sounds nuts but i placed a little bit higher than i usually do at regionals what sucks is i was one win away from uh, guaranteed top eight but i mean you know it is what it is i lost to true draco and i lost to um orcus i just got sniped on dangers and i got blown out by the monarchs erupt there was nothing i could do and i'm not gonna be mad about it this deck is a gamble deck but I mean, when it works, it works. And I mean, going second, this deck is insane. Like, honestly, I think Pure Danger is ridiculous right now. Like, just going second, you can just break so many boards so easily. So, I really liked it. I hope you guys did too. Shout out to, um, you know, all my boys that supported me the whole tournament. Uh, shout out to Golden Goats, uh, you know, all our sponsors and everything. And, uh, yeah, again, shout out to Akeem Davis at the Grown Man Table. You already know. Uh, Joe Bogley. Um, 
everyone that just helped me with this deck i really do appreciate all your help i appreciate all your support and i know it sounds like a degenerate deck but trust me like it ain't as easy as everyone thinks it's not a guaranteed otk ftk every time but going second i mean it's kind of built to win so it's pretty nice but hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully i'll see you guys over on my channel and yeah that's all i got to say thank you for watching